Okay, thank you. Good morning to everyone here present for participating in this hearing today. This is hearing number five of the 181 period of sessions. Once again, a virtual period of sessions. Unfortunately, the pandemic does not allow us to meet in person. I want to welcome all of you. We are going to talk about the situation of um, human rights and environmental defenders in Brazil. This has been requested by a series of organizations of the Brazilian society. I'm not going to name them all. I want to welcome you to this hearing and also to the state and uh, the representatives of the Brazilian state that are here present in this hearing. Also, in this hearing, we will count with Chandra, representative of the regional office uh, for the uh, on human rights in uh, South America. I am joined by uh, Commissioner Urejola and the country reporter, uh, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, Commissioner Esmeralda Arosemena, and Commissioner Sordo Ralon. The ad hoc uh, executive secretary, Maria Pulido, is also present, and all the team that uh, monitors the topics um, that will be dealt in this um, hearing, the uh, team in charge of the country rapporteurship, and also uh, human rights defenders, um, Commissioner Estuardo Rallon, and all the team that makes this uh, hearing possible, the technical team, the interpreters, and um, I want to greet you all. And I see that the special rapporteur on economic, social, cultural, environmental rights, uh, Soledad Garcia Muñoz is also present. Thank you for being here today. I would like to request that when you talk, you when you're not talking, please keep your um, microphones muted. You can see that we have interpretation in the lower part of your screen. You will see the icon of the globe. You can select that icon to choose the language that you want to hear in case you need it. The hearing will be organized in the following way. First of all, the civil society will have 20 minutes, so you can present the different topics. Then the representatives of the state, we have 20 minutes. Then the UN expert, we have seven minutes to make a presentation. Afterwards, the commission will have a space to ask questions and make comments. And the civil society will have 10 minutes and the state 10 more minutes. I want to, I want you to check that in your screen, you have a clock. It says blue sky timer. I want to request civil society organizations and the state. Um, if you can see the the clock, you can see it. The timer. Okay. So this timer will work in a countdown mode. It will become red when three minutes are left. So please respect the time. So we can. Uh, well, uh, continue with this hearing. First of all, I will give the floor to the civil society organizations for 20 minutes. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Okay, thank you. Good morning. I am uh, Chris Faustina from the Red Brasileria de Justicia Ambiental and Terra Mar Institute. I want to greet all the persons present, the commissions, the communities. It is key to have more space, this time, an opportunity for the participation of the people and civil society organizations in international democracy. An important part of the human rights defenders is a threat is related to um, the defense of the environment the persons that need to defend every day uh, they need to themselves our communities from different uh, types of violence two situations will be described today 
regarding the reality through the complaints that have been filed to protect and defend land, water, uh, forests, and traditional knowledge is part of the livelihoods uh, of these uh, communities. The work carried out by defenders should be a reference for all the planet in order to face climate crisis, um, food crisis, hydro crisis, and other humanitarian crises. Black communities, indigenous communities are the most um, affected on a daily basis. Media outlets are full of racism that affect the human rights and environmental reality in Brazil. The cruel aspects regarding violence against peoples in their uh, struggle for uh, land and water. There are bodies that have been reached, black and indigenous people, women, um, quilombolas, human rights defenders that have been violated by the racist patriarchy that exploits uh, nature and bodies. Violence overcharges the work um, in alarming context of criminality in of all classes, hatred, fundamentalism, lack of tolerance and mental and physical illnesses, the denial of the right to house in education, health, work, income, public safety, rest, and a life without violence. Current Brazilian government has expressed um, a, that it is a, against human rights, it defends violence and misogynist um, practices, uh, LGBTI phobic, and it does not protect health and education and spreads hatred um, against those who defend human rights. The way in which the Brazilian government uh, deals with the pandemic shows the reality of 600,000 people who have died because of the pandemic. Uh, what place do social, economic, cultural, environmental rights um, play, uh, have when the participation of the citizens is restricted? What is the role played when important environmental programs are closed, agrotoxic, um, and pesticides are spread. So what is the role played by human rights when they defend bills for the liberation of indigenous land from the mining and the agribusiness that um, hinder um, any uh, or collective organization regarding land and they want to uh, remove Brazil from the 169 Convention of the IULA when violence is um, defended. This is not about uh, asking for help, but requesting society about asking society about what are the uh, measures needed in order to respect the sovereignty of the Brazilian peoples in order to uh, stop these uh, killing in an immediate way. We need to guarantee the application of the 169 Convention of the IOLL. Thank you. I am from uh, Global Justice and Brazil. And Brazil. Brazil is um, one of the most dangerous countries for human rights defenders, especially for people who defend environment or directly to the line territory indigenous peoples, quilombolas, and other traditional populations. According to the latest reports from Goma Witness, in 2019, there were 24 dead defenders in Brazil. In 2020, there were 165 dead uh, in Latin America, 20 of them uh, in Brazil. According to data collected by the High Commissioner from the United Nations on Human Rights, in um, between 2015 and 2019, there were 933 um, assassinations in Latin America and the Caribbean, 174 in Brazil. This drastic position is not recent. The Brazilian society has denounced violations and violences against human rights defenders, including, including hearings before the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights between 2016 and 2018, a historical omission of the protection of people and environmental defender, defenders um, shows a, po a 
persecution and criminalization on the part of the current Brazilian government, which has withdrawn uh, social and environmental guarantees enshrined in the federal constitution of 1988 by means of the militarization of public institutions for the defense of the environment and traditional communities, uh, alteration, extinction of environmental roles and participatory councils, the omission of inspections and a lack of uh, combat of illegalities and crimes and explicit racist uh, character in state speeches and practices. Criminalization is directed to people but also to groups and collectives that defend the right to the territory and the environment. The speeches of President Jair Bolsonaro against indigenous peoples, Quilombolas, Black and social movements, such as Movimento Sem Terra, um, are examples of that. The lack of legitimization generates negative deep impacts or a hostile intimidating environment for people and collective defenders. The National Programs for the Protection of Human Rights Defenders was created in 2004 but implemented in 2005. And since then, the Brazilian Committee of Human Rights Defenders has made recommendations for its improvement, which the government has ignored. In 2016, uh, in 2018, the program was called Program for the Protection of Human Rights Defenders, Social Communicators, and Environmental Defenders, expanding the initial scope. But since then, no concrete measure or modification was changed in the methodology. In uh, Bahia, Ceará, Maranhão, Minas Gerais, Pará, Pernambuco, and Rio de Janeiro have programs, while Mato Grosso, Amazonas, Rio Grande do Sul, and Paraíba are in the implementation phase. The program continues to continue with many difficulties, among them the lack of articulation of public policies that face structural uh, issues associated with conflicts, insufficient investigation, lack of effective accountability in cases of attacks, criminalizations and assassinations involving human rights defenders, the institutional fragility due to the lack of legal framework, for the due to administrative issues and discontinuity of their programs in the different states, inconsistency in the risk assessment of methodologies and low effectiveness of protection actions due to the lack of dialogue. And there is a lack of effective strategies for groups and collectives that bear in mind their specificities. There are no measures aimed at women, the LGBTIQI a class populations, quilombolas or indigenous peoples that are targeted in unique ways. So we need to advance on a collective perspective for the protections of the communities. Good morning. First of all, I want to thank the opportunity for being a Guarani voice in this hearing. I am Ilso Soares Carayi Ocasio of the indigenous peoples of Guarani, and I live in Ijo de Coja Ivo, Ijovi, that together with 14 villages make up the indigenous uh, land de Coja Guasu Guavira in the municipalities of Guaira, Tejas Rocha, and also in representing 10 villages of the Tetoja, Coija, Cutinga, municipalities of San Miguel, Duguazú, Itaipulanda, Santa Elena, on the west state of Paraná. Today, we are more than 280,000 people living in Latin America. Our population is 80. 5,000 years ago. I am speaking on behalf of 5,000 Ava Guarani that is in a vulnerable situation. We do not have land to plant our food or seeds to collect our traditional medicines, and we don't have uh, materials to build our houses. Violence against our people are not investigated by um, the judiciary. I have suffered six shooting attacks since 2020 and numerous attacks against um, against myself and also attacks against uh, several villages in the region. No one has been punished or accused or responsible of these attacks. Why is there a lack of interest to investigate these cases of violence? Why does the lives of the Avara Guarani are uh, not worth it according to the Brazilian authorities. Our authorities constantly attacked by agribusiness companies that um, 
they are using many strategies to prevent demarcations such as the formation of militias and private security, as well as promoting discrimination in the cities and uh, our children in schools. We denounce massive uh, attacks and uh, judicial actions against um, our, um, our people. In one of those cases, federal judge of uh, Waida Chamber, Gustavo Keis Signaki has another uh, report uh, regarding the limitation of the Wasawa Vida and this had to do with the protests in 2009 in the city of Guaira, claiming attention to health and education in our villages. The National Foundation of the Indigenous Peoples has um, annulled any delimitation through the decree 418 of 2020. For more than 10 years, we have been waiting for the demarcation of our territory. FUNAI had to the uh, carry out that demarcation of the Tecoja Wasu of Boy Hakutinga, but after four years, it has not complied with this uh, decision. In November 6, Don Esildo Aguero was shot on his back on broad daylight and was left paraplegic. The uh, complaint couldn't be filed as the police officer in charge did not allow us to do so. In uh, November 2018, 20-year-old Emilio Novoda was assassinated and no one has been punished. Nair Don Vaz, Alberto Ortiz, Felix Benitez, Benigio Benitez were attacked by five people who attacked them with uh, knives. Virginio died and the civil police took 70 days to start the investigation and collect the victims' um, testimonies. Assassins were left, uh, were freed soon. Uh, Cridio Medina in Tejajoja municipality was illegally in prison and taken to a delegation to give a testimony. He was in prison for three days. The accusation was protecting an alleged crime committed by children of the village who had been collecting um, corn that had not been harvested um, near our village. In 2021, our people suffered an epidemic of suicide among adolescents and young people. Nine suicides among people uh, 13, 25 years old. And also there were attempts um, of an, an 11 year old uh, chill, a child. There are violations in the 1970s during the military uh, dictatorship. We, uh, we were never compensated. Also, Raquel Dodge had a we withdrew, has also withdrawn a legal uh, decision um, without respecting Convention 169 of the ILO. We disagree with this. The process gathers reports from the National Commission of Truth of the Sixth Chamber, and these uh, accounts were collected by the Commission of Indigenous Rights of the UN, which is already present in the precautionary measure issued by the Commission. This continues to impact us as he ha has killed fauna and flora and has erased our history and our present in the region. Guarani also suffer from the anti-indigenous political pressure promoted by the federal government. In 2019, the demarcation of our land, uh, our own president said that the indigenous people were not going to be given any land and they were inside of the uh, farmers. Um, the National Congress has proposed uh, has highlighted um, bills 490 and 191. That's why we want to denounce our suffering in this hearing. My name is Luce Iluminar from El Camino. 
and we should try to defend human nature and human uh, beings and nature. We need to light our path to defend life and nature. I would like to thank the Commission for granting us this space, for being here representing our people. And I would like to tell you that the voice of the Quilombola people needs this space. And that's why we would like to thank you for this moment. Talking about Brazil, is about talking about nature and human life. We see that our life is expressed through pain, through suffering and through nature. I'm an atleta from one of the territories or Quilombolas territories in Marenao. And I'm I'm also, we live here in agony. We've been living in agony for over 500 years. All the evil has been um, spread in our territory where we are living and indigenous peoples have been displaced. We are facing a complex scenario. We are being killed and they kill everything. They are killing the air, the forest, the water, and they are killing us as well. We are victims. We've been victims for a very long time. And the pain that I'm expressing right now has is the pain for those who have been killed every day. So from our territory, I would like to say that we were going to have a proceeding to deal with the spreading of big farms. We see that there is a culture that is dominated by hatred and we are suffering this for many centuries and we are suffering still uh, this is now still. Today we are undergoing a very difficult situation to weather with my colleagues. We are fighting for our li life because we are human rights defenders and we also are nature defenders. Our lives, we are being persecuted. We are criminalized once again. And in this space, what I would like to do is to say that when a leader is being criminalized and is killed after that, men and the community are being killed and they are also going to kill our land and therefore we are not going to be we are going to be nothing so as human rights defenders and defenders of our land what we need right now is to make our voices heard and we need to work together I think that the voice of the Quilombola is very important. And I would like to say that we are in here as a community. We are here waiting actions that promote life, the life of nature. What we want to do is to defend what defines us and what define our lives, the criminalization is affecting us. Our lives are being dismantled every day, throughout the day. So that's what we want to request each of you to please save us. Thank you. I don't know if anybody else would like to talk because you are on time. I don't know if everybody has taking the floor. Thank you. Now I would like to give the floor to the representatives of the state. Thank you. 
Thank you. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. I would like to thank especially the commissioners here in the hearing and also the regional representatives of the High Commissioner of Human Rights. I'm Joao Lucas Quental. I'm from the Human Rights Department of the Foreign Ministry of Brazil. And I have the honor of reading the presentation of the state of Brazil in this important public hearing held by the commission regarding the situation of human rights and environmental rights in Brazil. The government of Brazil recognizes the important contribution made by human rights defenders in our country in order to meet our collectible goal, that is to build an equality society. We are well aware, we are well aware of the risk that can occur because as we um, and as human rights defenders do their job. So what we try to do is to protect human rights defenders. And this includes also environmental defenders and social communicators. Our judicial authorities have acted in order to investigate and to investigate human rights violations and to um, hold those accountable for those violations. The Brazilian state has worked to promote a better atmosphere and a better scenario for those human rights defenders to continue doing their job free of threats. And we are going to prove this in our presentation. Now I would like to give the floor to the General Coordinator of Witness Protections and Human Rights of the Global Protection Secretariat of the Ministry for Women and the Family. Um, he will be addressing the specific measures taken to protect human rights defenders. And after that, I would like to give the floor to the general attorney for the indig for indigenous peoples and after that i would like to give the floor to the deputy secretary for protection policies to promote racial equality ezekiel roque he will be giving information regarding the structural issues related to the activities of human rights defenders in brazil thank you thank you commissioners and to all those present, I would like to say that I'm honored to be able to clarify the situation or the status of the protection programs for human rights defenders, environmental defenders, and social communicators. The state would like to present the following elements. First, we need to say that the program of protections of human rights defenders, communicators, and environmentalists is a program that follows up cases of human rights defenders that have suffered threats and that are at risk across the national territory. According to two of our decrees, these decrees establish provisions and establish measures to protect human rights defenders and their activities. Um, in order to promote those provisions, the national policies, according to what was established in the decree 6044, uh, we would like to conduct federal measures and to articulate measures, including all the areas of government to protect human rights defenders and to protect them, especially in those cases that there is a special risk of vulnerability. The constitution, the actions of the government go beyond this program that I have just explained. We work together with the judiciary, with the legislative bodies and with civil society as well. Because what we would like to say is that in order to protect human rights, uh, it is necessary to cover structural issues. And for that, we need collective actions. It's important to say that the states and the federal government 
have different programs and between 2019 and 2021, um, over 6 million reais have been used or invested to maintain or to keep these programs. Um, and the federal program protects 620 people and also this includes human rights defenders, environmentalists, and also social communicators. 60% of them are human rights defenders that protect lands and that fight for um, right to land. Currently, we are trying to expand programs. That is a continuous action. The program of protections of human rights defenders is being implemented in Bahia, Pernambuco, Rio de Janeiro, Mato Grosso, Maranhão. And recently it has been implemented in the state of Paraíba. The states of Amazonia and Rio do Grande do Sul, um, in which the program is not being implemented, uh, what we have is a federal program in those states. And this program is articulated with, together with social, with civil society. We'd like to say that human rights defenders uh, have the support a team, and we have a specific uh, group of people in order to guarantee those protection measures in the state of Manerao until March. They have invested. Uh, huge sum, sums of money. And the program includes 81 human rights defenders in that area. With regard to the state of Marañón, the federal government and the state invested over 4 million reais between December 2015 and September 2021. The, the program is now uh, under the renewal phase until 2019, there were many actions of the police, the army, and many other bodies that were involved in the fight against illegal trade of um, wood and timber in these states that I mentioned before. And you, as you know, what we do is we send many of the requests to these specific programs. And in order to receive protection, you need to meet some specific eligibility, eligibility uh, criteria. Um, and also the threats that the human rights defenders need to be related to this activities and to defend of one of these areas that I mentioned before. And also the members of the Ministry for Women and Family had provided guidelines in order for human rights defenders to understand how they can get the necessary elements, for example, for the proceedings. Um, taking into consideration the information given by the program, we would like to say that that this case is under analysis because of the lack of information for its processing. Among the issues that were in identified is the lack of evidence to prove the situation. According to reports by the team, on October 16, 2021, we tried to communicate with the ombudsperson but we have had no reply. And there are specific situations, for example, the situation of human rights defender Sandra Borin. She has had, the technical team has difficulties to communicate with her and to access evidence to continue with the proceeding in order to overcome these problems and to guarantee the protections of human rights defenders across the country. The coordinator sent all the states that have this protection program a request to submit all the cases that are under review and also a report identifying the different issues that appear during the process in order to find solutions 
to include all human rights defenders and to protect them. Regarding human rights defenders in, Col in Quilombos, we need to say that we had four situations in, four, in June this year. We need to say that all human rights defenders that are included in the protection program um, have the support of a specialized team that prepare protection uh, measures according to Article 13 of 2018 but we don't have official records of other human rights defenders. What we are doing right now is to order state programs to send this information to us when they receive complaints or any information. Right now, the state of Brazil is trying to improve the quality and the um, type of measures of protection for human rights defenders. We have created a pilot project for regional teams. Over 2 million reais have been invested for that in 2020 and 2021. We have created two technical teams, one in the city of Dorado and the other in the city of Porte. These teams were hired in order to uh, streamline the protection measures and to guarantee uh, their implementation. Also, in order to reinforce protection measures for human rights defenders, the Ministry for Women, Family and Human Rights conducted visits to the areas in order to strengthen articulation with local bodies in order to make the measures effective. Those visits were held together with the general coordinators of the programs in order to understand better the different conflicts and the situation of human rights defenders and also to understand the root causes, why they are in this specific or troublesome situation. We would like to have a direct conversation with human rights defenders in order to collect information so as to understand what is affecting the situation of human rights defenders and also to discuss actions and measures to improve the protection policy that we have in place in order to reduce threats against human rights defenders. I would like to say that the size of the territory of Para is a challenge, especially for defenders. In order to improve our coverage and to expedite actions, it's necessary. We sent an official letter to the Secretariat of the State so that they presented a proposal to expand the technical team in order to have one, uh, more than one team in the state of Paravi in order to have a better coverage of that area. We expect that we are able to implement this team in the near future. We would like also to say that a new decree of the program of protection has been issued, which was published on September 27th, 2021. That decree also included the involvement uh, or includes the involvement of civil society in the federal councils so that they are able to participate in some of the decisions. Soon we will be launching uh, also a call for proposals to invite civil society organizations. We also would like to say that we have, are working with public bodies so that they participate in some of the cases that involve human rights defenders. And in addition, another important age action that we have taken is the fact that we have communicated to the Ministry for Women that they should have an open dialogue with those organizations that are members of the Commission of Human Rights Defenders and with human rights organizations at a federal level. We want to create a national plan to protect human rights defenders. Our expectations is towards the end of the year, we should have working groups that include civil society organizations to follow up on the work that has to do with the creation of this plan and the articulation with public bodies. 
The state of Brazil is trying to strengthen the dialogue with civil society to find solutions and so that human rights defenders could, can be included in, prote in the protection program in order to improve also the actions. And this has to do with the way the government is able to understand the situation of human rights defenders. Finally, the state of Brazil has tried to pave the way by improving the open dialogue with civil society and with the state bodies that are involved in these policies. Our joint efforts will help us to protect the communities and the lives of the human rights defenders. Thank you. Members, participants, da audiência, da presente audiência da Comissão Interamericana de Direitos Humanos. Members, participants of this hearing, taking into account the presentation that was made, there were six points that were identified worth uh, commenting in regards to uh, public indigenous policies carried out by the Fundai. And regarding prior consultation of the Article 6 of uh, the 169 Convention of the ILO, the Brazilian state has made an effort to apply and comply with prior consultation as we have signed the convention. The Fundai always carried out that prior consultation and the most important thing is what was done with the Natuami community regarding Manaus Bonavista in connection with the judicial annulment of the report for the identification of the indigenous land Wasiwa Uruwa. It was uh, in the decision carried out, uh, issued by the judge was implemented in an action uh, that was carried out by the municipality uh, of Terra Rocha. That is the truth. In connection with the Bill 191 regarding mining in indigenous peoples, we cannot forget that the constitution establishes that mining indigenous people, indigenous land is possible. That is an action that was developed. Um, this included the participation of the indigenous peoples and there is a normative established by the parliament. The government, the federal government just approved this in order to forward this to the Congress uh, so that the programs that may be understood as crime due to omission could be avoided. Regarding the participation of technical experts, it shows that the expert chose by the president has expertise and knowledge on the subject regarding this uh, subject that is related to indigenous policy. That is not uh, new. Regarding the militarization of positions, it is necessary to say that there is no room. Uh, there, this has not been hindered. The members of the Fundai are civil civilians. They are not military. And in connection with persecution of the leader Sonia, we cannot forget that every public official in Brazil has to um, inform indigenous leaders about uh, this subject and not doing so, failing to do so, is um, a crime and from that I provided that information. In fact, the judiciary in Brazil has decided on the lack of existence of a um, complaint by the president of the Fundai. So the presentation made before the commission regarding indigenous issues shows a lack of uh, agreement among communities regarding indigenous policies, but the constitution allows the 
executive uh, to choose their priorities and the, and the way in which public policies will be carried out. That is the concept of the government. Within the uh, constitutional freedom, they can decide how to implement the interest or protect the interests of the Brazilian people. And we include as such the quilombolas in the indigenous people. So the we expect that the other members of the commission acknowledge the determination of Brazil and thank you. Thank you to the Brazilian state for the information. I will now give the floor to the representative of the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in South America, who will speak for seven minutes. Madam President of the Commission, representatives of the state, I want to thank you for this invitation to the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. It is a pleasure to be here with you today. In 2016, the Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights Defender, Michel Forst, published an important report regarding the obstacles faced by human rights defenders, identifying the situation in Latin America as particularly dramatic. Unfortunately, five years afterwards, we can tell that the pressure on um, an environmental defenders increases in the region and the situation uh, in Brazil is uh, very uh, worrisome. Our office has registered 164 assassinations of human rights defenders in Brazil. But it is not just about assassinations. In our opinion, it would be wrong to reduce this topic to this extreme form of violence. There are other dimensions that worry us. First of all, the threats by economic actors, criminal and legal um, are threats. These do not end in deaths, but do create damages for uh, defenders, in, even to their physical health and affect the whole community they belong to. In Brazil, it is particularly uh, about the occupation of lands and indigenous lands uh, that carry out uh, illegal mining, deforestation, and the pressure by companies, especially mining uh, companies and the agribusiness companies, and they are not uh, consultated. In the last two years, the High Commissioner and the Commission, in a joint way, have called the attention regarding the increase of the attacks. This year, we have expressed against the attacks uh, against the Murupu peoples in Brazil. Secondly, policies of the state that favor the expansion of economic activities in indigenous territories, there is an open support of the government to initiatives that uh, are being discussed in the Congress in order to favor these trends. Among others, we are concerned about the proposal that would allow Brazil to uh, stop uh, ratifying Convention 169 of the ILO in order to favor the economic interests over the uh, rights of the indigenous peoples. Thirdly, the need for protection. On the one hand, the office congratulates the fact that Brazil has developed a program to protect human rights defenders communicators and environmentalists. And we offer technical cooperation to the state in order to strengthen this program. According to in information, different human rights defenders and that are part of the program are environmentalists defending the rights to land of the indigenous peoples or quilombolas communities. But this program offers reactive solutions on the other hand, they uh, systematically weaken the institutions devoted to the protection of the rights of the indigenous peoples, fundai, and the environment. The strategy announced by the government of using military operations in order to contain illegal mining 
and other criminal activities can even worsen the uh, situation. Um, the armed forces are not trained for the protection of the environment. Uh, isolated military operations cannot deal with the structural causes. And when these forces act, they can leave a population uh, with no defense. And as study shows regarding implementation of resolution of the Security Council, there are risks for women and children. Fourth, criminalization and violence, institutional violence, defenders, particularly of uh, vulnerable situations such as indigenous communities, face criminalization and violence by police from different levels that may be at uh, the service of uh, the owners of the land. They uh, also argue there is a build uh, anti-terrorist that uh, establishes that some uh, organizations have maybe carrying out um, terrorist actions. Fifth, impunity. In most cases, aggressions and attacks. In some cases, it, it is possible to uh, carry out convictions of the uh, perpetrators, but not those who order the attacks. This sends a terrible message to the society that killing one uh, person that is a defender is uh, less serious than exercising that defense. This is combined, for example, what occurred in the state of Paraná in 2016 when 11 peasants died as a result of police actions. There is impunity. Several police officers have been investigated but have not been convicted. They have been threatened because peasants are still being uh, threatened. Fernando Dos Santos was uh, murdered in February 2021 and criminalization in January also to the families of Jose Vargas Jr. who were accused. Also, there is a gender dimension. Many times, indigenous women lead the defense of their land and are at risk. In 2019, according to the Commission Pastoral de la Tierra, 102 uh, women defenders of her human rights violations. In 2021, the Association of Indigenous Women of the Mundurucu were attacked several times but because of their defense of the mining activity. Their houses were set fire and their families had to run from the territory. In this difficult context, the office that I represent restates its commitment to keep on working with the Commission in order to strengthen the protection of uh, environmental uh, defenders uh, address the structural causes and find synergies with state actors that need to protect their human rights. Thank you for your attention. Thank you to the representative of the Office of the UN High Commissioner. I will now give the floor to my colleagues. If you have any comments or questions, I'm going to start by Joel, with Joel Hernandez, who is the country reporter and reporter for human rights defenders. Thank you, Madam President. This is a topic that is close to my reportership. I want to greet civil society organizations who requested this hearing and the representation of the Brazilian state and also to Jan Jarab. I want to thank Mr. Jarab for his presentation because he has brought to the table different topics that are of your concern with the Office of the UN High Commissioner and the Commission. I want to go into detail in some of these topics, but first of all, I want to highlight the nature of these kind of hearings. I want to point out that public hearings are carried out with the goal of establishing a dialogue between the requesting parties, the authorities from the state 
and the international uh, bodies. Uh, in this case, the commission and also the in this case, the presence of Mr. Janjulab, in order to have a more clear context and information about this topic. The intention of the commission is not to condemn. We just uh, make comment and suggestions in order to guarantee the enjoyment of the human rights within the constitutional framework. We are aware of the state, uh, the rule of law and the democracy uh, in Brazil, but it is our duty to point out the international standards. In connection, the issue of environmental defenders is of great concern in the continent. Different uh, organizations of human rights defenders have pointed out that our region is uh, the region where the defense of human rights becomes a very risky uh, activity and particularly environmental defenders are at risk in those who defend indigenous people and the land are particularly at risk this is the topic that we're dealing with today so i think that it's important to highlight four perspectives but these right to defend rights that we acknowledge Firstly, the duty of the state to acknowledge the right to defend rights, the duty of the state uh, facilitating the enjoyment of the right to defend rights, the duty to defend and protect human rights defenders, and also the duty to investigate when there are uh, threats against the activity, the life, uh, the exercise of uh, the activities of human rights defenders. These conversations allows me to prove several uh, topics. The acknowledgement of the state of Brazil regarding this right to defend rights, this is very important. Also, I have heard the different measures that are being implemented within the national program for the protection of human rights defenders that goes hand in hand with this duty to protect human rights defenders but i want to mention uh, something that when we analyze the right to defend human rights that is not visible enough and i mean the duties the duty to prevent the state has in order to prevent threats to the lives and integrity of human rights defenders these prevention duties are related closely to different underlying uh, reasons Jan Jalab has mentioned how we have observed the existence of these threats, this risk that human rights defenders face because they are facing threats to their territories and to the development of their own communities through illegal mining, illegal deforestation. I believe that it's key for us to look at the underlying causes and thus, the Commission has expressed its concern regarding different initiatives that are being discussed in the Congress that will affect the feasibility or the continuity of the indigenous peoples. In November last year, the Commission issued a press release regarding different bills that could affect indigenous peoples and there is a fundamental element that i think it's very important we need to highlight in this context of risk it has to do with a prior consultation informed consultation that is enshrined in convention 169 of the ilo in the case of the indigenous peoples this is key for the prevention 
of risk before uh, the threats that they suffer. When there are projects, mining projects, infrastructure projects, uh, and they are carried out without prior consultation, they imply risk. It would be a positive signal if the Brazilian state within this framework could confirm if there is no intention of uh, withdrawing uh, the state's participation or ratification of Convention 169. That is a doubt, and we are deeply concerned, and the civil society is concerned about this. I'm sure that the uh, Brazilian state respects international law and respects its international duties, including Convention 169 of the ILO, and that it complies with its duty in compliance with international law uh, regarding different uh, treaties about water five. That is my observation. I want to conclude, Madam President, by uh, inviting the space to share the measures that have been implemented in order to carry out the investigation uh, in connection with the threats or violations of human rights to human rights defenders. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hernandez. I would like to ask Commissioner Hernandez, uh, Commissioner Arosemena or Commissioner Rallon if they would like to take the floor. Commissioner Arosemena, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the representatives of the state, but I want to also express my solidarity with the civil society organizations that requested this hearing. I would like to highlight uh, this solidarity after hearing Anacleta and Christian because they are demanding an answer. And I would like to welcome what uh, the representative of the High Commissioner Office and Commissioner Hernandez have made that has to do with the concept of prevention. We have listened to the state um, the measures that it's taking in terms of the articulation of different public institutions for the implementation of the program of protections of human rights defenders, social communicators, and environmental defenders. But um, the complaint of civil society makes me think about this concept the importance that the response cannot be reactive. These, the responses and the actions should be aimed at prevention. And therefore it's necessary to consolidate institutions that address or that have that vision. I also would like to um, express the position of the Inter-American Commission. I think that it's important to promote um, the collection of information. And we think that civil society should be able to participate. And you're saying that, but what civil society organization are, organizations are saying is that they are not being participating. So we have these two different positions and stances. And on the side of the state, this uh, we believe that the state should be open and the commission also supports this, um, this position, uh, the commission can support that dialogue. It's important to understand the big challenges. And it's important that the state of Brazil is recognizing or acknowledging those challenges. But it's important to be able to face those challenges. And that's what 
civil society is demanding. Um, I know what that we don't have enough time. I would like to listen to Rapporteur Rallon, but I also would like to listen to the special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, because I think I think that her opinion is very important in this matter. Thank you. Commissioner Rallon, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning, colleagues. I also would like to especially greet the representatives of civil society organizations and the representatives of the state. And also I would like to greet the representative of the High Commissioner Office. I would like to ask two questions to make the most of the time that we have. And it, because it would be good to listen to or to hear other comments from both parties. The first question is for the state and is related to what Commissioner was saying regarding prevention. The state said that at the beginning of the year, they uh, were planning to expand the technical teams to prevent human rights defenders or to protect human rights defenders. I would like to know uh, what that expansion of protection team implies. It would be great to learn more about this in this in the hearing. And my other question uh, is related to the intervention of Mr. Jan Jarav. He was mentioning his concern regarding the anti-terrorism law because Instead of creating a space for the protection of human rights defenders, there might be some ambiguous terms that could affect human rights defenders. I would like to know if there is any reaction or any comment of the state with regard to that bill. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rallon. Commission uh, Rapporteur Soledad Garcia Munoz, would you like to add anything? Good morning, Madam President. Good morning. Thank you for the information. I will speak in Spanish. I would like to greet the Commission and my colleagues of the Executive Secretariat, the representatives of civil society and of the state, and also Mr. Chancharab for our report, rapporteurship. Economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights are fundamental. And I would like to highlight that the United Nations has recognized the right to a healthy environment. That is a right that has already been recognized by the Inter-American system in the Protocol of San Salvador, to which Brazil is a party. Environmental defenders are necessary for the implementation of this right. They should be valued by states. The commission has express its concern on several occasions, especially on Brazil country's report because of the weakening of institutions and the weakening of environmental policies in Brazil. Um, also, the rapporteurship is following up with concern five bills in Congress that will change the rules of game in land management that could have an impact uh, the environment, 490, 2007, 191 from 2020, and 3,729 from 2004. And also bill number four, 510 from 2021 that um, allows for the permission of some uh, or the authorization of some activities. And also we have bill 4,843 uh, uh, that might affect the agrarian reform. Also the rapporteurship is well aware that mining, the mining sector uh, is increasing its activities in some of these areas. And we see that there has been an increase of over 1% in the exploitation of the territories of indigenous peoples. And the mining 
uh, is concentrated in the Amazonas and this contributes to deforestation. Uh, we have more data, but because of time restrictions, we are not going to list them now. I think that that information that I have just shared is enough to express our concern. And we would like to say that we are at your disposal to uh, join your efforts and to help you include Inter-American standards and the advisory opinion number 23 of 2017 regarding the right to a healthy environment. And we would like to suggest you reading the report of the Commission on Human Rights and Companies. And in this regard, I would like to listen to civil society organizations and to the state of Brazil regarding the progress made in this matter. And I would like to understand what their concerns are. And I would like to know if there are any measures taken to combat environmental racism. That is something that civil society organizations have brought to the table during this hearing. Thank you, Soledad. I also have some questions and comments. One has to do with the national program of protection of human rights defenders that the state pointed out that has not been implemented in all states. I think that one of those states is the Amazonas, which is basically the region of concern, especially with regard to the bills that were mentioned before. So we would like to know how you are working to implement the program in that specific area, especially to improve the situation of human rights defenders and of indigenous peoples. Second, I would like to know the measures that you are taking, um, because we know that Brazil is a huge territory and there are some territories that are far away from urban areas. And many of the violence acts and the murders uh, took place in those um, isolated territories. And we know that it's difficult for the state to reach these territories. And that we know that there are some actors that conduct illegal activities in these territories. So I would like to know which measures are you planning to implement in order to have a greater incidence in these territories because of the activities or the legal activities of third parties. And I also would like to know how are you going to work to protect those people who live in those areas? I also would like to second what Commissioner Hernandez said regarding uh, free, prior, and informed consultation. The concern, uh, the Commission has explained and uh, has expressed its concerns regarding Decree 177, and it would be very important that you uh, explain your position regarding free, prior, and um, informed consultation. Also, um, you said that the constitution authorizes mining activities, and there are many states that authorize this. And you say that the constitution determines that the executive branch sure is the body that establishes the priorities in terms of public policy. I understand that, but as Commissioner Hernandez said, you have the constitution, but you have international obligations in the area of human rights. And um, those obligations are legally binding for the state of Brazil. And that's why the commission has expressed its concern regarding some bills that were listed by the special rapporteur. And those bills um, could be in violation of the international obligations of the state of Brazil, especially with regard to the rights of indigenous peoples. I would like to say that, that the commission is contributing to the rights of indigenous peoples. And this is not only about the collective rights of indigenous peoples, but also our uh, documents are uh, highlight the recommendations in order to prevent the rights of these peoples. We understand that constitu the Constitution of Brazil has a specific regulations, but we understand that Brazil has also international obligations. So that's why we are really concerned about these p bills that are under review, but uh, we believe that Brazil should comply with those international standards. And those standards are not there only to recognize the rights of indigenous peoples, but also they are prevention, prevention measures. 
that has to do with the presence of third parties that conduct illegal activities in the indigenous territories. That's why it's important to acknowledge these rights in order to avoid the presence of third parties that threat the lives of the communities in those areas. I would like to reiterate this, but I would like also to know specific uh, attention to this. First, we are going to give uh, 10 minutes uh, for civil society, and then we are going to give 10 minutes for the representatives of the state. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, I'm going to speak first, or can you hear me? I would like to start my presentation by saying first that I would like to speak first about the ILO Convention 169, the annulment of a judgment that is still pending. The Fundai said that they are not going to defend communities regarding mining projects. That's a lie. There is no protection against uh, how they are exploiting indigenous peoples. For the president has expressed its interests or their interest to exploit indigenous peoples. They are applying policies that go against constitutional principles and against domestic legislation. Um, the government said that they have done a prior consultation, but that's the lie because they are rejecting our conversations on electric energy. Seven, we know that there is institutional persecution against uh, some indigenous community leaders. And this shows how protections bodies are not working. And what affects indigenous peoples the most is the policy of killing indigenous peoples of this government. The government is not developing any inclusive policy that takes into consideration indigenous communities. The state is omitting its obligation to the indigenous peoples to demarcate and to protect indigenous lands. This government is an enemy of indigenous peoples. During their political campaign, they said that they were not going to demarcate indigenous lands. And the hate speech is making or is skilling up the conflict. And therefore, indigenous peoples are being threatened by huge agribusiness actors and as we have said before every day we suffer attacks mm, all what we see is that there is a systematic attack against our rights because we are going are going to be deprived of the right to have our own lands because there is no demarcation of our lands indigenous peoples have been massacred we have been expelled from our lands. And today we're giving our lives and our blood to stay in these lands. And we don't have the flora and the fauna that we used to have. We have all soy cultures and they are invading our lands. Also, we have all these initiatives that interrupt nature. They are acting in our lands. But everything develops, but there is no progress for indigenous peoples. We cannot see any positive results here since the beginning of the current administration. 
or since the current administration took office. Thank you. I would like to make two comments, two or three comments regarding what the state said, regarding what the problem is, and everything that they say regarding the attacks against human rights defenders. Um, the reality uh, posed by the state is different from what we see. If that marvelous situation regarding what the program is doing were true, Brazil wouldn't be the most dangerous country for human rights defenders in the world. So in fact, what we see is that the state is the only one that believes in that reality. It's very difficult to have a dialogue when they say these things. And I would like to bring to the table two specific things. One has to do with budget. The representative of the state said that the program includes a budget that was allocated from the very beginning, but he's not saying that the Ministry for Women, Family and Human Rights is being investigated by the Public Prosecu Prosecutor Office because they are not executing the budget. The Ministry for Women only executes 44% of its budget and therefore they are being investigated. They do have the budget, but they do not implement the policies of the protection program. And what we see is that the program is not being implemented in all the states. The other thing that I want to say about the program has to do what the representative of the state said regarding dialogue. It is a lie. The state is not promoting any actions to promote dialogue with civil society because there is no participation of the civil society. The recent decree only includes three civil society organizations. Only those organizations are allowed to participate in the program. But we have six government agencies that are part of that committee. So there is no parity. You have six bodies from the government. You have three uh, civil society organizations. We are a minority in that committee, that the liberation committee. So, and the state said nothing about the fact that the fight was uh, ordered to prepare a national plan for human rights defenders. This was an order by the Public Prosecutor Office of the Rio of the state of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, it was not uh, something that was done in good faith. So now I would like to give the floor to one of my colleagues. Thank you. Pessoal, então, é, okay, eu okay, will speak after I do. Okay, so I also wanted to uh, share some thoughts. First of all, of course, there are differences in our, differences in our opinion. That's natural, but it's not what we are talking about. We are talking about what projects, what things uh, are being thought in Brazil for our agenda. Whether the proposal is to keep and um deepen inequality or defend human rights regarding land and the rights of the communities and when we think about this we see a trend that is generalized and this a trend towards weapons and that is not good for uh, the environment, the government, the parliament is passing decrees against the population rules, authorizing uh, each person that allows each person to have up to four weapons. In the past, they were allowed to have two, and we are the victims, quilombolas, peasants, there is an increase in the possibility to use weapons and uh, tracing and registration of weapons. In 2021, 
there was a study carried out regarding number of weapons and they have multiplied by two. There are weapons available. There's an uh, increase of weapons in the Brazilian society. That cannot be natural. We are aware of the Brazilian society. We know who is going to be murdered. The black people, indigenous peoples, quilombolas, the poor, the uh, environmentalists. And we are going through a situation related to the police reduction of budgets and the lack of implementation of uh, the budgets. In 2021, a report about biodiversity, there were 384 million for different actions, but so far, only one part has been used. So what can we think about this? What is being, uh, what is happening? This is not about different opinions. It's about what are the important actions for the Brazilian community, for the peoples, for the communities? What are the important things that guarantee our rights and, and quality environment? As I have said before, this is fundamental, not only for communities, but for the society as a whole that is facing serious attacks, migrating crisis, hydric crisis. And this is not about ideology. This has to do with ethics. And the Brazilian government needs to understand this and put a hold to all these um, situations. Before you give the floor to your colleague, you have already exceeded your time. So I would request your colleague to be brief because we need to have, we need to give the floor to the state. First of all, I would like to say that the truth was going to come out someday and now this has become evident during the campaign the government was announcing several things in their speeches and showing a campaign of what they were going to do in, with the water in Maranhões, in Sao Paulo and I would like to know what it has done so far for the Quilombos and when the pandemic started, well, we are still victims. We are also being persecuted during the pandemic and the truth needs to be told. We need to understand what it means to kill. We are not we are, we are not being killed with bullets. We are ki being killed in connection with health, with food, with education. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the state. They can use two more minutes if they want to do so in order to compensate the time used up by the civil society. Good afternoon. I want to greet everyone, the indigenous people, Umaru, Shawine. I want to welcome everyone present. First of all, I want to explain the situation when we talk about environmental racism. In, during the last two years, there were different um, demarcations uh, that were carried out in the quilombos and indigenous uh, communities. More than 2,000 quilombolas were um, benefited from this. And these uh, encompass more than a thousand hectares of land. Also, we have all we have given uh, land ownership to different quilombola families in Alcantara municipality in Maranhões. And this was something, um, a problem that 
was 30 years old, and this shows the commitment of the Brazilian state towards the Quilombola communities and the traditional people so that we improve the quality of their lives. There's a constant dialogue between the state and the civil society in all spheres. For example, the traditional council of the Council of Traditional Communities that is part of the Ministry of the Family and Women, and in spite of the pandemic crisis, carried out regular meetings. In 2020, we had three meetings, and in 2021, we have more than three meetings with the participation, active participation of the civil society, showing the position of the state, uh, and it's open to a dialogue with the civil society regarding the uh, struggle to fight uh, racism, uh, environmental racism. We have doubled our resources in order to control uh, this situation. More than 270 million reales, which improved the total value with uh, 1 billion uh, reales uh, for the control of these territories. We have also hired different uh, specialists, uh, more than 700 environmental agents, which increased, which um, was an 18% increase, and also an effort carried out with uh, military forces and 700 soldiers that are working in different operations uh, to fight against illegal activities in the Amazonas. So we know that there's a critical situation that has been going on for a long time and there are great difficulties to face this. I would like to talk about the data presented regarding uh, violence in the countryside, the murder of human rights defenders, and according to the report about uh, conflicts in the countryside, in 2018, there was a reduction of violence in the countryside and murders of uh, human rights defenders due to agrarian conflict. In 2017, there were 71 uh, murders of human rights defenders. In 2018, that was reduced to 28 uh, murders. In 2020, there were 20 murders. That is clear in the report presented by the CPT regarding persons, uh, quilombolas and indigenous people. So that shows there is an effort carried out by the Brazilian state in order to reduce the number of uh, victims. And this was acknowledged by the civil society when they published their report regarding violence in the countryside. And talking about the YMD situation, there was a process. So there was that, uh, that prior consultation existed and that process was carried out in a transparent way through three prior informed consultation complying what com with Convention 169. I participated in that area and that territory where there was an agreement with the indigenous peoples in order to uh, work together. And now we are going through the dialogue stage in order to compensate indigenous peoples in the future. That process uh, is being carried out. There is a dialogue and that has to be clear so that we can understand that the state respects a convention and applies it as uh, no government uh, in the past. Dear colleagues, in response to the information that was presented in connection with the decree, in fact, it is relevant. It's not ideal, but we know that it is relevant. And the exclusion of the civil society in the past was an exclusion. And in fact, there is no 
uh, investigation carried out by the Office of the Public Prosecutor regarding the budget. There was an investigation regarding the execution of the program. And we have been honest about that in all our responses regarding the program to protect human defenders. In 2021, we had 11 million uh, reales for the execution of that program. Law 1319, which is an important normative uh, regulating the compliance with the different uh, conventions establishes different guidelines. It is necessary for the states to present a report regarding the execution of their budget and monitoring in order to review the uh, implementation of that budget. This complies with the deadlines uh, regarding the national program for human rights defenders, the peoples of Rio Grande do Sul had a conversation with Dr. Enrico, and the next meeting has been scheduled in November with the Commission of Defenders, and there will be a project regarding the situation, and the civil society is already gathering information in order to participate in that uh, task force. That was already created even before the plans of the Office of the Public Prosecutor. So that was already being planned together with civil society groups uh, during the meeting that took place in 2020. Regarding the lack of articulation and structural issues, last year, general coordination sent more than 400 um, communications. That is an important point. And about this, we are making progress with a technical cooperation agreement with the um, Office of the Public Prosecutor in so that the obligations of the officials are carried out in a fast way. And regarding the fragility, we see the investment made by the state Regarding the improvement, I would like to mention three consultants that are about to be hired. One has to do with the risk for human rights defender, a methodology to deal with uh, virtual threats, and also one related to the diagnosis for the National Protection Plan. I also wanted to talk about the National Protection Program. There are no specific strategies for specific uh, groups, whether they are uh, women or LGBTI groups, but there are measures available for all groups. Also, I would like to tell you about the project that we are working on of uh, amendment that has to do with the creation of a border to deal with uh, situations of risk for communicators. Uh, we have invested 320,000 reales. And also this year in Maranhões, uh, there's going to be a national meeting with all technical groups through the participation of defenders in order to improve, uh, achieve improvements regarding the improvement of the state of Amazonas in order to conclude all states that are not part of the program are uh, dealt with by the federal program with the team that we have the civil society to deal with all demands. So all protection measures are available. Also, I wanted to highlight that this information has to do with the commitment of this administration with the program. And the previous governments did not have this commitment. Thank you. On behalf of the Brazilian state, I wanted to thank all your comments and questions, and the questions made by the petitioners, by the commissioners. And we took the notes of all the comments made, and we will send uh, written replies in connection with several of the topics that were brought up in the meeting, 
in connection with human rights and env environmental defenders. I wanted to quickly mention two things. Firstly, the Convention 169 that was mentioned by many of you, the state is committed to comply with this convention. And as the secretary has mentioned, we have implemented, we implement this convention on the ground. And I also wanted to mention regarding the different bills that have been discussed in the Congress that were mentioned in this meeting. We want to say that the executive respects the independence of the different powers and the independence of the legislative power. Some of the approaches have been discussed for more than a decade, and it is very common for uh, bills once agreed uh, go through substantial modifications uh, through alongside the legislative process. So any conclusions about these bills uh, is should uh, be taken into account as these bills will be continue to be discussed and everyone can be participate in these discussions. Thank you. Thank you to the representative of the state and civil society organizations on behalf of the Inter-American Commission. I want to thank the organizations and the state for this hearing and the information that you have presented. And also, we want to thank the presence of the representative of the UN High Commissioner, Jan Jarav, in this hearing. There is a topic um, about which I would like to receive further information by written, taking into account what Karei Gaju has denounced regarding uh, some uh, human rights defenders who committed suicide. If you could send that information by written, uh, that is a free concern to us, so please send that to us. And to conclude, the commission has published its country report in February this year, in which we make a series of recommendations. There are five recommendations related to human rights defenders, uh, which includes the need to strengthen the national protection plan for human rights defenders uh, in terms of the structure and the economic and logistical uh, elements and resources. And the commission will follow up the recommendations in 2022, uh, paying special attention to the measures of effective protection to protect human rights defender with a differentiated approach, which we believe uh, to be very important in the case of the defense of human rights defenders. And also we will closely follow up the stigmatization uh, issue that has been brought up in this hearing regarding human rights defenders. And we understand that legislative debates are part of uh, the plurality of democracies. We believe that's very important, but as a commission, we pay special attention to the legislative debate uh, when it comes to bills that have an impact on human rights. So we will keep on following up that debate. And we would like to point out the uh, disposal of the uh, commission to for any technical cooperation to uh, with the state, not only the executive, but also the legislative, which we believe to be very important for the Commission to provide support to the states in the legislative debates to comply with international standards when debating bills that have an impact on human rights. So we want to restate uh, that we are at your disposal in terms of training as well to the different uh, state actors. Thank you so much to everyone for your presence today. And we will stay in touch. Thank you so much for that. I want to say goodbye to the boy that was uh, moving, waving his hand. Uh, I don't know if he's listening to me, but. Seu filho, seu filho, a comissionada quer, quer, quer dizer olá a seu filho.
Pois é, ele acabou de sair. Foi brincar de novo. Você acaba de ver isso. Well, we send him our regards. He was very active during the hearing. He was present. Goodbye. Thank you. Até logo. Gracias. Até logo. Gracias. Excelente debate. Até logo. Tchau, tchau.